Greetings and hallucinations to all you folks out there. I've got a huge game for you. A six versus six on the Twin Rivers EP map. This is going to be an epic one, but before we get started on this, I've got to say a huge thank you to everybody who watches this channel. Something amazing happened in the last three days. I posted a cast and in three days it got well over 1,200 views, which is the fastest view accumulation of any cast that I've ever posted. Even Settings, I was very very surprised because usually the sentence ones are the high viewing ones. So thank you to everybody who subscribes, everybody who's getting the word out, passing these videos around to people. I would encourage you both uh, for selfish reasons for growing my channel and for community reasons for promoting this amazing game. There's a lot of people that would enjoy a fully simulated epic scale RTS and you need to recommend this game to them because it does not need to be forgotten to history. and. One of the things you can do is send casts, send my cast, send Guile's cast, spread the word, and link in FAF, FAForever.com, and this game. You can get it for like three to five dollars on Amazon to pick up a key. It's a very cheap game, so recommend it to everybody you can think of, and hopefully we can get some more people into play. FAF has been fairly populated recently, you've been tipping around the 1,000 user mark, so definitely come in and have a game if you haven't been in a while. There's plenty of people to play with. Alright, thank you said and done with, let's dive into this game. Now, this is a basically an average Joe's rated game, we've got a median of about 1,400, and let's go ahead and introduce the guys before we get too much further into this. On the left, or the southern team, whichever you prefer, both would be correct. We have Smurf Hunter taking Aeon, then we've got Batesman as Seraphim. On the right side front, we have Eaton taking Seraphim, and Purgatory as UEF, so that's our four front players. Then we have two heirs, Arkin as Cybrin, and, oh my word, Nikerth? Nikerth. Nikerth. Something as Aeon. I'm just going to call him Green. Oh, there's two greens, but we'll know what I mean. Um, this is actually the perfect setup. Cybern for aggressive early combat units for air, Aeon for potential mercies, and then massive eco and T3 air control. So this is exactly the setup you want. Strong ground units, strong air, and a fairly good team composition. And this game is beautifully balanced. On the northern side, we have Pock taking Cybern, Laser as Cybern. So double Cybern front, and then on the right side, we have Akinibus as Seraphim, and Momo as you. UEF. Then for the air slots, we have Cybern and S Cybern and Aeon again. This is Star Lord and Jack. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the action and see where this game takes us. As we're waiting for the early engagements, although there are some potentially very very soon because we do have a light assault bot headed back on the right side, some scouts meeting in the middle. And then, of course, a Mantis Scout and a Mech Marine all headed towards the Reclaim in the center because you want to snatch that Reclaim up as quickly as you possibly can and, if possible, deny the enemy engineer so that they don't get that early mass boost. There's a single T2 wreck and a T2 transport in two halves that has a decent amount of mass in it. Uh, that you can use it to boost your eco and that is going to get sniped off mostly because since you have two people instead of one person crammed into this side section can't really slip anything past here without having a large group of units that can run by one other thing that i will say about this map twin rivers is a very well known map but what a lot of people don't realize and it surprises me how many games uh this is just completely f people completely fail to utilize this there is a lot of manual reclaim, especially in the early game if you dedicate a couple of engineers to go for manual reclaim and you have the extra time to do the clicking around, you can manually reclaim all of these rocks here. And these actually have a fairly significant amount of mass. You can manually reclaim all those. You've got mass around the center rock here. You've got, ah, these guys are actually doing it because they've got all of these rocks already taken care of except for those two. We missed a couple right there. So there's plenty of reclaim to be had all around these rocks and definitely need to take advantage of that. Okay. The early engagements have not brought much fruit. There is basically many dead T1 units with basically no ground gained. All right, while we're waiting for the next phase of the game, a quick explanation. There's a lot of people, well, I say a lot. 
Typically, when someone says something, there's many more people that are thinking that, but just didn't take the time to send a message. And I've gotten a couple of messages about it and a comment about it, so I was going to address it. I am trying not to click as much. But what is actually happening is it's not mouse clicks. It is my left hand pad. And that is my shift key, which is what I use to see where everything is headed. And that is a habitual motion. I do it in game and I do it in cast apparently, although I had not realized it, where as I'm watching, I just kind of tap the shift key off and on a couple times every five seconds or so. And I don't know if you can see that flashing on the screen, but basically I am looking at the web of move and attack orders, just seeing where all the units are headed. It helps me keep track of what's going on in the battlefield. But I moved my mic back, so hopefully it won't be so loud, and I am consciously trying to reduce the amount of clicking that I am doing. So there's your explanation for that, and maybe you should start using the shift key yourself. It does do a lot to help keep everything organized. The shift key is your friend. You should put it to as much use as possible. Now, up here on this expansion, we have seen a brilliant maneuver by Smurf Hunter. He has actually sent a T1 bomber that has killed the engineers that were going to build a land factory and take this expansion. However, the mantises have not been killed. The manti, mantises, whatever they are. So... Those guys were able to lock down this landmass, at least for a few minutes. We've got another T1 bomber headed up right there. We've got some bomber aggression from Eaton. He is laying down some hurt on these T1 units over here. And we've got a little bit of a push right here in the middle. Going to have a mass extractor go down. No big loss. We've got an edge build right here. This engineer is going to build a factory right up there on the plateau. It's going to give them access to the island expansion, which has a whopping six mass extractors yes in the ep version it's only like three or four in the one versus one or the three versus three i cannot remember um so yeah that is definitely something that you need to grab a hold of as quickly as possible because it is a huge boost to your team's eco we've got blue dropping this one if he can get there before the interceptors yes he does and then we've got purple dropping this one so we've got one expansion going to each player as long as this mantis is not able to kill off all of the engineers without dying and i don't think it will because there's the bomb that kills it all right We've got a nice little group of tanks from Purgatory over here on the right-hand side. He is playing the T1 aggression to the max. Akinabiz is going to move up with his T1 up, unupgraded commander. That is a tongue twister if I ever did hear one. Unupgraded, say that ten times fast. He is going to move up and push back these tanks, so hopefully they will not get back to bother anyone in their home bases. And then Pock is going for Mantis spam. That is always a good plan when you're Cybern. I'm going to lose a... Hmm, I think that was accumulated T1 bombers. That was probably a T1 mass extractor surrounded by power generators, not a T2 mass extractor surrounded by mass fabricators. So actually not as big a loss as you would think, but if he was in the middle of an upgrade, and I do not know if he was or not, that could have been a significant amount lost because he paid for that T2 mechs upgrade but never actually got to receive any of the benefits of it. On the back side here, we've got a... Move to T2 Air for Jack. He is going to probably build Corsairs. That is what I would do if I had Cybern T2. And Star-Lord is continuing to spam some Interceptors, although he is not spamming them fast enough to accomplish what he needs to accomplish. Down here, we had a bomber that was able to clean up all of these engineers. Actually, two bombers. They were able to kill everything off. Should have gone Land Factory first, so that you could have defended yourself. And then we do have... Um, more tanks dropping and two players getting in on this island, so they're going to lock that down with no hope of recovery from the northern team. Smurf Hunter going to get pushed back by Pock. He does not have any upgrades on his ACU. We're seeing all or mostly T1 ACUs, which is kind of odd. Uh, that is a gun upgrade right there. And a lot of spam. I love spammy games because it makes them action packed. We've got. Yes, Smurf Hunter is going to retreat all the way, and he has no more units. This is actually not good, not good at all. We've got Batesman moving over to the left. If Pac isn't careful, he could get double teamed, but at this point, I don't think it's a huge worry. Smurf Hunter needs to worry more about the amount of Manti that are about to run over his base. We've got a T1 point defense going down with five engineers assisting it. That is definitely going to get built. Uh, Arc whatever his name is, Arkin is going to drop some engineers over there as well. Looks like he's going to try to build a point defense of his own to help out his buddy, his pal, and that is going to be too little too late, I'm afraid. Point defense is going to go up, but not before the majority of the units have run by, or the majority of the remaining units anyway. 
We've got a double comm push now. Laser and Pac moving down the stretch here. They're going to lock down this reclaim, claim it for themselves, and hopefully turn it into more Machines of War. And what is this? We have a commander drop. Jack has decided that he's going to have none of this, the southern team owning both of the expansions, and he's going to go straight for the comm drop. He's got a T2 commander, which should be able to more than handle the small amount of units that are down here. He's going to immediately plow under this small group of units, and I'm sure he's going to move up here. And he's going to build some point defense, most likely. Yes, he's going to build a T1 point defense in reach of all of this stuff and then move over to the left. So, that was a brilliant move there. I love it. He has enough interceptors. No, those are purple's interceptors. Ooh, that is actually kind of dangerous. Purple was very nice, and he moved his commander up in order to kill off all of these units for his friend. That is very nice of him. A lot of people would not assist their front player to that extent. Now, the problem here is that this is a Primes uh, individual for Mercying. He has no anti-air, he has no interceptors, and we have an Aeon player with a T2 air factory. I would have gone straight to Mercy's because our, um, Jack would be dead as a hammer at this point had Mercy's been the ultimate option. Purgatory dropping the t2 upgrade i think no that is gun upgrade yes plus nine is gun upgrade so we have two commanders here one of them already with the gun upgrade eaton is going to be more than a match for momo Chilla. and purgatory in a few seconds here is going to have the gun upgrade as well so these guys will be able to match step for step akinabus and momo and the right side is going to remain a stalemate. Hello, Mr. Bomber. Where are you headed off to? I bet you're headed for the... Oh, oh no. You're going to turn around. Probably bombing these units. But we do have some bombers from Akinabus. I love saying that name. I'm probably not pronouncing it correctly, but I find it hilarious to say. It rolls off the tongue. Got a T1 transport full of Auroras headed down here. Not sure how much good that is going to do, considering the fact that we have a T2 ACU over here with a Cerberus turret, and Auroras are basically made of paper. We've got the two commanders still at the front here, Pac and Laser assisting each other in gun upgrades. That is, yes, gun upgrade. It's minus nine and minus nine. So we're at almost 10 minutes into this game, and these guys are still thinking gun upgrades and super aggressive tactics. I love it, I love it, although that means that somebody is probably going to die soon, because when you get really aggressive, that means your commanders are out front and center, and when you have dedicated air players in a situation like that, a lot of times what you end up with is dead ACUs. Alright, while everyone- oh! What? That's another commander drop. Holy cow, two in the same game. Star-Lord. <laughs> the northern team is bound and determined, come hell or high water, to claim these expansions. This is like the postal service coming after your mass extractors. <laughs> Neither rain nor sleet nor snow will keep us from our mass. These guys are going to build, that is a T2 commander as well, going to build radar, going to walk forward, build point defense, and slowly assimilate the base and accumulate all of the mass. And all of these Aurorias are just going to kind of chill out here. This would be a prime target for an overcharge. One overcharge. Seven kills. Because I think the transport is close enough. Eh, it probably wouldn't die. I don't know. It might actually die to the overcharge. It would basically be veterancy right there if you had a few other kills under your belt. T1 point defense going down, wall sections going up, and the T1 point defense, the bane of the Aurora's existence, is going to, yeah, just demolish all of those Auroras. Killing the radar was smart. That meant that the back Auroras could not fire at the point defense while the point defense was killing them. Because vision range is shorter than attack range, as I've said many, many, many times before, and it still bears repeating because Auroras are awesome units if you use them correctly, and weak sauce if you don't. Oh, we have a counter commander drop. Going to the right, it looks like Neko, whatever his name is, is going to directly engage the enemy ACU. This is how we do in Subcom going to play 
going to put everything on the table at once. You're playing assassination, so you take your most valuable unit and use it to conquer everything else. Well done, my good sir. Let's see how you fare down there. While he is proceeding to try to get himself killed, you're going to look up here. Momo Achilla is building T1 point defense rather than using his gun upgrade, which I'm not sure is the smartest idea considering he has two commanders right next to him who do have the gun upgrades. He should be overcharging these Ilshavas to keep them away. And he has plenty of T1 units and a teammate here to help him out. Eaton is soaking up a lot of damage, but not as much as Momo. Momo at 7k and Eaton at, well, now he is 7k because he's taking a lot of fire from a lot of things. Neck is going to throw down an Oblivion turret, which is immediately going to start pounding Star-Lord in the face. Kaboosh! Ah, my eye! Overcharge away. And half the health is gone just like that. If he throws another one on that turret, he will be rid of the problem. And, oh, 200 health. No, don't walk away. Kill that thing. You don't want that bothering you later. We got Pac on the left-hand side here. Wildly spraying overcharges into this bank of units. And he has his own Manti with him as well. Looks like his teammate is going to send a large amount of T1 spam his direction, laser throwing down another upgrade. Considering he already has the gun, this is probably the stealth. That would be my guess. We'll see in a moment when he finishes the upgrade. On the left-hand side, Jack is throwing down T2 mass extractors with storages, jumping his eco ahead as much as he possibly can. And down here on the southern... Oh, my word! Another ACU drop purple we have both of the air players on the right side holy cow what is happening to this game this is madness i don't think i've ever seen three commanders on the side island at once in one game i saw dueling commanders on the side island but we're talking a double team commander in the expansion here star lord i do believe is going to die there is not much way i think I can see that he is going to get away from this even if he manages to get into his transport. There is an absolute swarm of interceptors over here. He's going to be very lucky to get away. Oh, Oblivion's punch again. Trying to get back out of range. I really want to look at other stuff, but I don't want to look right now because this is going to be hairy. He's got 1700 health jumping into his trans... No! Don't use... The transport he's not there come the interceptors all targeting that transport nope they're gonna fly by I think he was planning on the ACU the transport moving a bit and transport is dead air control is no more that ACU is stuck looks like we've got a huge interceptor spam going on from purple he is trying to bail his teammate out but green just has too much of a head start on interceptor production that is not going to end well for the brave little fleet of aircraft that belongs to jack well if he can divide and conquer he may have a chance but no the micro is bad these interceptors following from behind the entire way not going to work 1600 health left on star lord i don't think he is long for this world so many mantis Especially for this late in the game. Not seeing as much teching as I would have thought. A lot of times at 14 minutes, there will actually be an early T3 factory. Kind of strange that there is not. Okay, Star-Lord, 600 health. He's got some T1 point defense next to him to help guard him. But there is Corsair and boom! The first death of the game. <clears throat> that is going to eliminate one of the air players and the Aeon air player at that. Not good, not good at all. That leaves Jack all by his lonesome. <clears throat> Waiting to see whether this is full share or no share. No share, like any true game that is not sentenced. But Jack is a pretty good player and a very good ecoer. So he should be able to snatch up all of this reclaim and immediately tech up as much as he possibly can and do amazing things with it. So... Jack is out all by his lonesome on this island. Thankfully, he does have it firmly within his grasp, but he has a severe lack of anti-air still. 
I'm amazed that he has not been sniped yet. This just surprises me to no end. Down here on the southern side, it looks like these guys are going to throw up a T2 gen and a shield together. And load up the remaining artillery that they were using to combat everything else with. And they are going to drop that somewhere. Where is as of yet to be determined. And that was a bad turn of phrase there. Does I English? I think not. Where did the transport? There it is. There goes the transport. Probably going to drop in the expansion that used to be a live player until he was so cruelly separated from his reality. Nope, that is going to drop right here. And it is free to rain down fire on these T2 mass extractors. The Aeon T1 artillery has the highest damage per mass of any of the Tech 1 mobile artillery and does the best job of killing bases. It has brilliant damage and very good accuracy. The only problem is it sucks versus units, so the first time you run up against a unit, you're going to lose all of your artillery. He really needs to focus fire a couple of shots onto this mass extractor to kill it. We have Tack Launcher firing into the base here. Not good at all. Actually killing the not yet built Tack defense with that one. That would be Eaton, who has the TAC Launcher Backpack. Brutal thing, the Seraphim TAC Pack. I think that is one of two things that is OP in the game right now. The Commander TAC Missile for Seraphim. Not the UEF one, but the UEF one is glitched, as I found out in a game a couple of nights ago. It really needs to be fixed. Or rather, the UEF TMD needs to be fixed. Aha! Another drop. This one mostly composed of lowly Tech 1 units. The SACUs are mildly OP, and the Seraphim TAC Launcher is OP, in my opinion. Not terribly badly, but just enough to be frustrating when it gets abused. So, that transport to the right got dropped. And the one to the left is not going to be so lucky, but I think most of that is due to the speed and higher health of the Dragonfly. All of those Thams are going to start running up through the base. Tanks were an excellent choice for this because they will be able to defend themselves from other attack units that might be thrown in their direction. But there's a Jester. So Jester is going to be able to deal with that, but probably not quickly enough to prevent all of the damage coming his way. He needs to move those tanks before they all die for no good reason. Lots of MMLs. Of course, we all love MMLs, so there's no reason not to have them. Oh, T2 Extractor Upgrade finished. If only he had been a little earlier to that party, he might have been able to kill that right before it upgraded to T2, which would be maximum waste for the other guy. Incredibly frustrating when that happens. You invest all of your beautiful mass into this T2 upgrade, and then, like, 98% it gets killed. So you never saw any return on all of your mass invested in it. It's just a complete and total waste that makes you depressed. And yeah, all manner of bad things happen. Smurf Hunter is walking through with his cloak of invincibility. And he is going to hammer down on Pock. A lot of Mantis coming in, but he has blazes on his side. So I think he'll be fine. He's going to pursue to great length. I'm going to try to go for the kill on Pac, and honestly, I don't blame him. The Northern team is already down one player. They do have a strong air position, but it never hurts to eliminate another player. Pac is dead. You dead, bro. Kaboom! And so... I was about to say it goes out another flame, but actually that is the creation of a rather large flame, so that would not be an accurate description of the death of an ACU pilot. Here comes another dragonfly hauling some more units. Maybe T2 this time, I don't know. There's a lot less on that one. I think it's just a handful of Tech 1. Not as many Tech 1, yes. But it has a mobile anti-air this time. Not that one mobile air anti-air is going to do any good against three jesters, four jesters. And a bomber, I think, somewhere. Alright. Pox base is going to get moved into. 
These guys are not getting any chance for recovery. Red is just going to uh, plop down on the couch and chillax with his ACU. No, he's not going to chillax. He's going to get aggressive again. He's dragging an additional mobile shield behind him. Yo, dog, I heard you like shields with your shields. And that is going to let him pretty much not worry about anything and attack whatever he wants. Attempting to get a T3 gen up here, but that is a bad investment when you have an ACU about to come into your base. And these two ACUs over here apparently decided that the island was as safe a place to be as any. And, uh, yeah, there's no need to relocate. Looks like Neck has a slight, ever so slight eco advantage on Jack. A whopping two mass points per tick. And that is going to go away very soon because Jack essentially has three bases at this point. And the northern team is going to be down another base, I think. There's a brick moving in to lay down some damage on Smurf Hunter. Not a bad idea, not a bad idea at all. Smurf Hunter does have the range to kill that brick, but he's got to realize that there is a brick melting his face before that happens. I can't see! I'm blind! The lights, they're so bright! I sure hope his windshield has flare reduction. And the brick goes down to an overcharge. Brilliant! Okay, Purgatory is kind of walking around in circles, trying not to get hit in the face with anything. Akinabis throwing down some T2 point defense, and uh, then assisting it. It's going to walk forward a bit. Like a lovely stroll in the park, not a thing to be worried about. Does have some interceptors over his head, but interceptors never hurt anybody. Purgatory going to push back a little bit more. Akinabis is going to have to run away. The northern team is looking a bit constricted. Jack is doing a fantastic job of ecoing up. He's got T3 air on the field. And a significant amount of T1 and some gestures. Hopefully he'll be able to do something momentarily besides build air units. Here comes a strap bomber. Looks like he's probably going to try to snipe someone. That could level the playing field quite easily. I think Smurf Hunter is the ideal target for that kind of thing. His shield is just about to go down. There it's down. Starting to take damage. He's only got 13k health. Three strap bombers would kill him in one pass if he didn't dodge. And at the moment he's kind of tangled in units so I think dodging might be a hard thing to do. <clears throat> So many interceptors. Gonna throw down a T3 air factory there. I can't believe how much of this game is happening on the side islands. It's just totally counterintuitive. I would love to see a tack launcher though. Right here. Just right on the end. Right there. Watch all of this crap over here. It'd be funny to see. Smurf Hunter trying to recharge his shield. Sitting there, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Winding the little crank candle in the cockpit, charging the battery for his shield. That's a rather large capacitor though, so it takes a while. Akinabis moving to the rear of his base. Throwing down some T2 power. He's already got one, but hey, more power is usually better. And Laser's base is falling around him. We have a strap bomber! I did not even see that. T3 air upgrade complete for Ark. Sending out a T3 strap bomber with no cover. That is actually not good because Jack does have ASF, but he's going to push those ASF out. Bombs incoming for Smurf Hunter. I think this is about to end very badly. Strap Bomber circling around for another pass. He needs to get that mobile shield to his commander if he wants to live. We got a third Strap Bomber out. This is going to end badly. Strap Bomber shot down by Swift Winds. Nicely done. Neck is going to save his teammate, but... He's going to lose his swift wins, I think, over that, even though he's versus interceptors. Ah, uh, there's a 
bad turn and then a good turn and then the swift winds are victorious but drastically reduced in numbers the strat bomber is still hammering away on laser couple of ASF right here but not enough to really do anything and throwing some Corsairs down for some reason got a monkey lord started in the back here it's not going to happen my friend there are blazes standing in your way No! I missed it! 23 minutes. I'll go back and record it. Purgatory going down, most likely to that strap bomber there. That would be my guess. Momo is having to pull back in the face of a whole lot of Ilshivas. I think he may actually die soon. Because, yes, Ilshivas are nasty. Everyone say goodbye to the Momo. And he's gone. Kaboom! Oh my word! <laughs> my death is not in vain! Took out the entire T2 army with him when he went. So, not an utterly futile debt, but not, uh, not the best one either. Smurf Hunter is going to start closing in on the base up here. Jack Hare still has his eco intact, unlike my voice, which is breaking apart rather rapidly. But Neck is building up his eco even quicker. We got 217 mass per tick for Neck and Jack Hare at 144, leading against Ark with 121 and then Eaton with 120. So the southern team is at a distinct advantage at this point. We have units in the base. I'm going to start hammering away at the eco and build power in the back. I don't see how the team can possibly come back from this. No ability to build T4s. Lost most of the team. Laser EQ is about to go down as well. Eaton is in his Fortress of Solitude, though, and he is getting another upgrade. That is a whopper of an expensive upgrade. Does he have... Ah, com on com action right there for you. Laser going down. That is probably the Telemazer upgrade. That would be my guess. That is what I would do in this situation. The last ditch hope of a desperate man... But he's got a lot of people to kill if he's going to succeed at that. Akinabis trying to get an upgrade here. Not entirely sure what he's going for. He is definitely having power issues and he surely does not have enough combat units. Those two things I do know. And now we watch the slow disintegration of Akinabis is his, his game um, base. Two one bomber is gonna crash right there. Sniper boats. Although some of them are hitting the ground. Firing randomness is so cool on Spring Commander. I was saying at the beginning of the cast about how it is fully simulated combat. Um, the firing randomness is not a percentage, side to side, or a miss rate. It is actually the randomness of the barrel, and my goodness, my voice is terrible right now. Um, which is why it is inaccurate in 3D, which means it sometimes even hits the ground. When the sniper units are walking, they are less accurate than when they are standing still, which is a pretty cool feature. Agnabis going to lay down the gun on Smurf Hunter. Smurf Hunter's shield is back up, though. He's feeling pretty confident in his ability to pull off the standoff that he's engaging in. Jack throwing down Cerberus turrets as fast as he can, but there's units pouring in. And here come the Strap Bombers. Going to lay down, yes, blanket damage for killing all of the t2 gens that is the big area of effect that the cybern strap bomber has an awesomely amazing tool Akinabis is going to fall back to his base shield here hoping to eke out just a little bit more life if he possibly can looking down here depending on how far along that telemazer upgrade is 
You could feasibly telemazer both of these players before they could do anything about it. And there's only two point defense down here. He could feasibly escape if he was quick enough. Depends. Well, yeah, because if he kills both commanders, all that crap is going to die. And then the other team doesn't have anything to throw at him because the guy who owns all the strat bombers is down there on the island too. So I'm not going to say this game is over yet. It looks pretty depressing, but it is not over. I'm going to look at Jack Herrer. He has teleport. I'm sure he's doing telemazer. And it is all most done. Now he's just got to decide who to target. And I'm not sure that he has enough information or enough units left to actually scout. Ah, Soul Ripper is done, but it is leaving. It is running to the other side of the map. There's the teleport, and I have to pay very close attention. Everybody spot the purple dot. I have to see, ah, I know what I can do. I can select his unit, and then we'll be able to see right there. Well, we are going to get a good view of what happens here. Got both commanders right there. Going to immediately start firing. Going to kill the point defense. Go for the cyber and ACU first. T1 point defense building. This is not good. Got T3 ACU building tech one point defense. This is going to be close. There goes the ACU. Target the point defense. Kill it. Kill it. And he's golden. Both air players down. The problem is going to be killing the red commander though. All right. Soul Ripper, Strat Bombers, all of the air. It is now dead. Now we just have the front players who should be desperately building T1 point defense right now. There's the Athotha. Batesman is safe. We got to figure out... Oh, he already teleported. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Ah, there he is. Jack Herrer taking on Eaton with the TML comm. Oh! Bombers and point defense going to take it. I don't think the TML is quite there. 1,800 health. My goodness, that was close. Ho, <laughs> Well, that was rather one-sided towards the end, but the double telemaze was worth the ending. <laughs> that was a very, very neat game. So we had a lot of solid gameplay with good teamwork from the Southern team, and then a last-ditch effort from the Northern team that came very close to succeeding, but sadly not quite close enough. Hypothetically speaking, he had this base, and he had this base, and none of these guys had any air or anything, and their T4s and all that other stuff would be useless hanging out on the central landmass. He could have teched up the two islands a little bit, maintained some air production. He does have some factories up here and his power intact, and he could have actually done quite a bit of damage, possibly won that, if not for, I'm not 100% sure if the TAC missile killed him or if the two, actually it was probably the sniper bots. That's what it was. It was the sniper bots. Stupid sniper boats ruining all of our fun. Alrighty guys, that is the end of that game. This cast, hopefully you had a good time watching it. And like I was saying at the beginning, share it and thank you. Alrighty, I'm going to head out of here as always. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next cast.